Uh, we are catching up with our reporter Samgele Maseko. Well, the former chairperson of uh, the ANC in the Northwest, Supra Mahumapelo, has uh, responded to his suspension from the ANC in a media briefing today. Mahumapelo and uh, acting provincial secretary of uh, the ANC Women's League, Biza Lingopane, uh, were suspended for five years from the ANC yesterday. Let's cross now live to our senior reporter Samgele Maseko, who is in Mahigeng uh, with this exclusive of sit down with Supra Mahoma Pillars. Over to you then, Sam Kelly. Well, Flo, indeed, uh, the former provincial chairperson of the ANC in the Northwest Province. Uh, has uh, been suspended by the interim provincial committee led by Shomane Chawuke as the coordinator as a member of the African National Congress for five years. But uh, he says that uh, he last night wrote a letter to the National Disciplinary Committee of the ANC chaired by ANC NEC member Mildred Oliphant that he's appealing this particular sanction by the IPC, which he also says doesn't have the powers to suspend it. I'm going to bring him now, uh, Supra Muhammad are you a suspended member of the ANC? Yeah, well, uh, good evening and evening to the viewers. Of yes. course, uh, of the course, ICC, uh, in terms the, of the Constitution has, has got powers to institute disciplinary proceedings on any member. So uh, they've made a determination that my membership is suspended for five years. Uh, that determination was done in our absence, in the absence of both ourselves and our representative on Tuesday. And uh, our representative and ourselves, we had indicated to the DC that because of the absence of our rep, we will not be there. But they decided to make the decision. So we have taken a decision to appeal. And we hope that uh, the National Disciplinary Committee can as quickly as possible call us so that ourselves and the DC of the province, we can sit and face each other. And uh, the National Disciplinary Committee that must then make a final determination. Mr. Muhammad Pilo, are you a suspended member of the African National Congress or does the appeal make the status quo remain that your membership is then active? Well, in terms of the, well, in terms of the constitution of the ANC, as soon as you lodge your appeal, then the status quo uh, remains. It means um, this, the decision of the PDC is in suspense until the National Disciplinary Committee concludes this particular matter. So, uh, in short, uh, it means I'm a member of the ANC in good stand, standing in terms of the Constitution. Right, with the IPC, they're saying that you are ill-disciplined, you are forming parallel structures in the province. The, this province has been disbanded two to three times, and in all provincial conferences that were subsequently convened, you were able to come back. What may be the motive in suspending your membership? Well, I, well I, there, are, there are some of the comrades who are in these structures who hate me with passion, uh, deep-seated hatred. It's not political. It's personal. We have outlined... In our letter to the National Disciplinary Committee, the reasons why we want them to recuse themselves. They have refused to recuse themselves. So the reasons there will demonstrate to you why some of them have got issues that are personal uh, with me and why I thought there will be reasonable apprehension of bias uh, from their side. And here it is confirmed the decision they took is draconian. Uh, they didn't engage uh, politically. I mean, I simply went and addressed a meeting of the ANC Women's League and did door to door in the by elections of the ANC in Maretzani. And uh, it, it, it can't tantamount uh, to them saying I'm bringing the organization into disrepute, division, factionalism, and so on. The meeting was in the open, the masses of the people were there, um, and people were happy. And the ANC improved its uh, performance in that uh, voting uh, district. And Jiki Jiki, we are suspended now for, for five years. So I think those comrades need to be spoken to by national. Because their responsibility was to unite uh, the province. Now, you don't unite the province by embarking or choosing the path that they've chosen politically. Because now there's polarization of members of the ANC uh, in the province. So um, I hope that National will look at the conduct of the IPC 
and some individuals within the IPC because I've got evidence which I'm going to show to the National Disciplinary Committee. A WhatsApp group which is called Tumamina. One of the people there who is at the provincial office working in Tomani Chawike's office in 2018-19, they had already written there that I must be expelled from the ANC. And now they come in the form of the DC to now execute what they've been writing in their own WhatsApp group. So essentially this DC, you were suspended without representation? Of course, yes. We have of not course, yes. We have not even pleaded. The DC has not reached a stage where we are asked whether uh, we are pleading guilty or not guilty. We are not there yet. We got stuck on them having to recuse themselves, them having to give us further particulars, which they don't want to give us. And the last thing was, according to the, uh, the letter from Lutula House, when they were established as an IPC, it's clear there in the letter that if you want to embark on disciplinary processes, you require approval from the SGO. And we said to them, give us the approval. There's no approval. You may say you are a fine one to talk because you yourself lived by the sword and you will die by the sword because you've suspended people like Chana Todovu, who was your deputy chairperson, suspended your provincial secretary uh, who was at the time, Tabela Motaboha, and they're saying that what goes around comes around. What do you have to say about well, that? They can, well, they can say so. It's okay. It was not for them being in ANC meetings. It was not in them doing door to door. It was not in them propagating what the ANC uh, stands for. They know what happened uh, and why the decisions were taken then about what they were, what they were doing uh, by then. So it's okay. I mean, we, they've taken a decision. It's fine. We respect it. We'll follow the due process of the ANC and see where the NDC uh, will end on this particular uh, matter. The comrades don't want to engage politically. When I was still in the IPC, I said to them, comrades, we have been given the responsibility to unite the province. My suggestion is that let's go for a retreat of three to four days, sort out our differences there. From there, all of us together, let's go region by region, branch by branch, sub-region by sub-region, meet the traditional leaders, the business people, the NGOs, the taxi associations, so that we can demonstrate unity in action practically. And they said such a retreat will never happen. Why did still the provincial chairperson of China to Tovo and Kabula Matabo no, and Kenemur along? No. No. We engage them all the time. All the, let me make you an example of one mayor in Ziras. That mayor we engaged him for four years before we took a, a, a decision to take him to the DC. For four years. We even sent traditional leaders and people in the church, his church, to talk to him some of the elders in his family because the ANC's responsibility also is to try and, and build people and show them that uh, we err and when you err you must learn from your your mistakes we shouldn't just rush into into decisions and so on but you know to be suspended from the ANC because you did door to door and you addressed a gathering of the women's league and they don't address that with the women's league they addressed that with me when I was an invitee uh, to the meeting. It's very strange, I must say. Why don't you respect the suspension? Franz Ban accepted when the ANC suspended him for five years. Five years. No, I, no, I won't uh, respect that suspension. I'm exploring internal procedures because I know it's done with a bad political motive. It was decided long time ago. I mean, even three days ago. There's somebody now who's going to go to the police station to, go and, to do an affidavit. That person was phoned by somebody to say, uh, hallelujah, we got rid of him, uh, uh, Supra, this time around. When the DC had not yet uh, pronounced and even yet uh, said. So it's a, it's, a, it's a motive that is bad politically. It is because they want to silence me politically. It is an agenda which was part of the Supra must fall uh, campaign. And me being myself, Supra Mahuma I'm not going to leave the matter lying down. You know, had I done something extraordinarily against the code of conduct of the ANC and been shown how I flouted the constitution of the ANC, I will accept.
So it's not for the first time I go. It's not for the first time I go to the DC. When I was a provincial chair of the youth league some years ago, I was taken to the to the DC of the ANC for propagating what young people were standing for uh, by then. And I still believe now what I was propagating, doing door to door, addressing the women's league, and people being mobilized to vote for the ANC is good for the African National Congress. Actually. Those leaders in the IPC are supposed to, to do what I was doing in Maretza. On a weekly basis, they must do door to door, addressing people, traditional leaders, the churches, and so on. But if they hibernate, and then when we go and do the organizational work, invited by the Women's League and the branches, and then they stand up and charge us, we'll rather be charged. What you dubbed the essence of absence of presence since 2018. Why do you respect if one, in the words of Shomani Chauke, and desist from addressing those branches of the ANC? Is it still because we are available to be the provincial chairperson of the province? No, I'm a revolutionary. I'm an activist of the African National Congress. My branch receives invites. Other branches wanting me to, to come and facilitate political education, to do seminars, to do door-to-door, -to, -door, to do campaigns. I'm going to be active until I become very old, where I can't do door to door and so on. At that stage, comrades, if they want to come and see the old man, SOR Mahumapilu, to share ideas uh, on, on politics and so on, I will still do it. So I'm continue to be, I'll, I'll continue to be active in the African uh, National Congress. If the branches of the ANC say, through formal nomination, we want you to be in the PC, we want you to be the chairperson, why not? I will accept the nomination. I've done it many times uh, uh, in the past. If they say we don't want you to be elected, I'll also accept it gladly and move on with my life as an ordinary member. I'm an ordinary member now. I'm not even in a BC. I'm not bothering anybody. I'm just sitting, I get invites via my branch and I execute the mandate of the African National Congress. So instead of uh, the IPC saying, Comrade Supra, that work that you are doing, it's good or it's bad, come and explain. They can face me. I mean, why can't they call me and, and face me and say, yeah, uh, this and that that you are doing is wrong. Then I can show them in the policy documents of the ANC, the constitution, the program, it says every member of the organization has got a duty. That's rule four and rule five. You have got a duty to impart knowledge on the policies of the ANC, to be active in the African National Congress, to make sure that you combat all the wrong tendencies in the African National, National Congress, and I've been doing that. I've never disrupted any meeting. You know, if I disrupted the meeting, I'll understand. And they suspend my membership for five years because that's a, a gross misconduct. But I can't be suspended for doing door to door. What? The DA motion for a further inquiry into the Busasuya um, Mkwebane being the public protector, advocate Busasuya Mkwebane. The DA. The DA is a strategic political opponent of the African National Congress ideologically. At no stage in my conscience will I vote with the Democratic Alliance, no matter the reasons, no matter the mandate, I will not do it because the constitution of the ANC is very clear that the, Afri the, the, the DA is an opponent of the National Democratic Revolution is a counter-revolutionary organization, the DA. My own position is that the ANC going forward, and I hope we can maybe discuss that and adopt it as a resolution in the conference or now in the NGC. What we should be doing, we shouldn't even be talking about, about the DA. My, pro my proposal, and I'm going to propagate it through my branch, the ANC must bring together all the African and black organizations so that we can work together as a majority and have a two-thirds. And the two-thirds majority that we have, we must not dissolve those other parties. We must have a common platform where we agree so that the two-thirds majority, if we can have it as a broad front of Africans and black organizations, we can use it to advance radical economic transformation, to move faster, 
in making sure that we improve the lives of our people. The DA is in a crisis. People are resigning every day. My money is gone. In the Western Cape, people are is dwindling. The Freedom Front is eating into the support of the DA. Now, instead of us as the ANC uniting, making sure that we strengthen ourselves, we are doing all these funny things of uh, suspending people for doing door to door for the ANC. An instruction given by the national chairperson Kwede Mantashe and the TG Paul Mashadile that you must vote for a further inquiry into the fitness of uh, the public protector uh, being able to hold that uh, office. Remember that, uh, even, that if the uh, even if the leadership can come up with a party line, if the party line is not consistent with the policy positions and the political posture of the African National Congress, a member of the ANC in their conscience, and I'm not the only one by the way, we're about 6 or 17 in parliament who didn't support this motion. In your, based on your conscience, you raise that with the leadership. That's why I wrote a letter as a member of parliament to the SGO and I said, my conscience does not allow me to vote with the Democratic Alliance. You, you, I, I don't know if you saw members of parliament after the results were announced there, uh, in parliament. They couldn't celebrate. celebrate. Why can't they celebrate? Because comrades know that that position, even if it came from the leadership, That position was contrary to what the ANC stands for. We can't work with the Democratic Alliance. We can't. Unless it's explained if there is a reasonable tactical reasons. What is the tactical reason? But in the caucus, there was no explanation. The leadership came and said, comrades, parliament is sitting at two. Uh, when you go in there, you vote for, for the motion. And we wanted to raise questions there. We're not allowed to raise uh, the questions. The ANC is a democratic organization. You express your views through the uh, democratic process of the ANC. If you are defeated, you accept the view and the decision of the majority. If you think you still want to raise those issues, you raise them within the structures of the ANC. That's why I'm one of the people who wrote to the SGO. And until today, we have not been called to come and explain why we did not vote in line with the dictates of the caucus of the African. I'm not the first one. I mean, there are members of the ANC, for instance, when there was a vote against the President Zuma to go in parliament, they didn't follow uh, that motion. Remember, uh, people were told that they must, uh, uh, they must follow the party line. And the party line was that you don't vote with the, with the opposition. It was Comrade Gwede, the SG, who went to parliament and said, follow the party line. But there are those who didn't follow the party line. Comrade Hanekom, Derek, didn't follow the party line. He said he actually worked with the EFF to make sure that they remove President Jacob Zuma. What happened to him? You know better. Before you got to the SG and step aside, Do you believe that the public protector, Advocate Moses Yom Kwebane, is a hired gun to go after President Ramaphosa and those who supported him at Nasdaq? That's not, that's not my language, hired gun, language and so on, no. Uh, Advocate Mkwebane is heading a chapter 9 institution. When you look at the work that is done by that chapter 9 institution, we must look at it in the context of the constitution of the republic. We must look at it in terms of the oversight mechanisms that Parliament apply on all the Chapter 9 institutions. We must look at her performance uh, in the office, including the fact that for the first time, the Office of the Public Protector has got a, a clean uh, audit financially from the Auditor General. But people argue that no, the office lost too many Uh, cases. Now, which public protector goes to court and represent himself or herself? Nobody. And why, where is it in the constitution where it says part of the measuring tool we will use against the chapter 9 institutions is that they must win all the cases. You win all the cases, if you lose cases, we get rid of you. There's no such a thing. Right? We've got judges, judges in this country who lose cases, magistrates 
rulings are made, their, their decisions are overturned by the higher courts. Is there any magistrate who has ever taken to task or the higher court? No. The constitutional court overturned some of the decisions taken by uh, the Supreme Court and so on. Is there anybody who's calling for their removal? Because they've lost uh, uh, cases, they've been uh, rejected by the constitutional court. Nobody says say so. So if you apply standards legally, constitutionally, apply them consistently across the board. Remove the public protector if you want to do it. Not, not because the office lost cases in court. No. Because the future public protector will still be there, by the way, in this life. There will be a future public protector. I can tell you now. The future public protector will be taken to court. They will lose some of the cases. Must the future generation stand up and say, because they are losing cases, remove the public protector. I mean, what type of democracy is that one? Where you remove people because they are losing uh, uh, cases. Let's look at the performance. Performance. Let's look at the number of cases the public protector's office has dealt with. Does it affect the poor or the rich? I have looked at those reports. Most of the cases of the public protector, Busiswe Mkweban, are about matters that are affecting the poor. It's water, it's clinics, it's education, it's roads, it's jobs, and so on. Uh, so according to me, according to me, when you look at those reports, the volumes of the reports that uh, she has dealt with, she has done well. There's the step aside resolution of the NEC. Do you believe the SGS Makashule and Bogani Pongo, Michael Mabuyakul, Zandile Kumete, all charged Sindisiwa Komba in the Eastern Cape should step aside? Should step aside? Yes, if they do it voluntarily. The, the, the resolutions of Nazarek says those who know among other things that uh, they have done something wrong they know deep down that they have done something wrong they must approach the organization and say to the organization we think we have gone wrong uh, here and voluntarily uh, step aside right it also says those who are reported to have done uh, wrong things those who are charged and so on and so on and so on now uh, I don't think that uh, people who know that they have not done anything wrong must step aside unless voluntarily they step aside. When you look at that resolution and other resolutions of the ANC, I think we made a mistake as the ANC. We didn't take our resolutions to the lawyers after taking those resolutions to scrutinize them and make sure that every resolution complies with the law. I'm actually through my branch going to suggest that the next national conference must take a decision that says after conference, the resolutions must be circulated to members for comment for 21 days or so. And they must also be taken to the lawyers to be checked. If you remove somebody because uh, you say they are the accused in court, look at what happened to Bongo. Bongo won the case. If Bongo was removed on the basis that he was formally charged by the due processes of the law, it would have been injustice uh, on him. What will we be doing now if Bongo now he has won the case? And other comrades who have won uh, their cases, you remove them from their positions. So the ANC, and I agree with the DSG, at some point the DSG was explaining the difficulty that the ANC finds itself in, in as far as removing people and later on uh, people are cleared. What do you then do? People have suffered reputational damage in the eyes of the public. Those people are corrupt and all these other things. And now the courts clear them. So the ANC, in my view, must tread a little bit, a little bit carefully. So my own view is that those who are wrong, step aside voluntarily. Because if you force somebody to step aside, it means you are not totally complying with the Constitution when it says you are not guilty until you are found guilty by a court of law. SG should not step aside. If he doesn't step aside, would you support his suspension? Suspension. I'm not a member of the National Executive Committee. So it's up to the NEC 
uh, to decide. It's also up to the Secretary General of the ANC to decide after he has completed uh, uh, his consultation. If the SG knows that he has done nothing wrong, I will not support his step aside. If he knows that he has done something wrong himself and he says, yes, I accept that I've done something wrong, yes, then he can uh, step aside. But if uh, people are going to be pushed out of their positions, and it's not only uh, SG. Look at Magumede, for instance. Magumede in the, in the KZN uh, province. Uh, she says she has not yet been formally charged by a court of law. What do you do in that situation? The person is suffering reputation in the eyes of the people, what about the family, the children, and so on. And I'm not saying we must not deal with corruption, we must be ruthless with corruption. But be ruthless with corruption where you've got the hard facts. But we must also, as the leadership, not run away from the reality that because of our political differences in the ANC, sometimes there are pe pe people who can concoct charges against a person. It happens all the time. I mean, it's happening against me all the time. It's happening. Uh, there are things that were concocted against me. They didn't fly uh, in court. People were making noise here about me. They couldn't even approach one police station with those particular issues. So I'm saying the unit of the ANC is very important, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't act where wrongdoing has been done. And uh, where, where people feel that they are wrong, yes, they must voluntarily step aside. Why end now? Has SG told you that he's stepping aside or not? I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Thank you, Mr. Mohamapilo. That was Supra Mohamapilo, the former provincial chairperson of the ANC in the North, was saying that he's appealing the judgment of uh, the interim provincial committee to disciplinary committee interim provincial committee of the ANC in its uh, sanctions against him to be suspended for five years and uh, he's going to national on that issue his membership remains intact and he's an active member in fact was even saying that uh, he's going to ace Mahashule's branch in the free state in Paris on Saturday and also saying that if Mahashule has done nothing wrong he must not step aside but if he's done something wrong he must voluntarily step aside he won't support any motion for the SG to be pushed out of the ANC. All right, thank you very much uh, then to uh, Sam Kele Maseko, who is in Mahikeng in the northwest uh, for us, uh, having a sit-down uh, conversation with uh, Supra Mahumapil, of course, him saying that uh, he he is still a, me a member in good standing of uh, the ANC, uh, given that he's lodged an appeal uh, to his uh, suspension. Uh, that means he is uh, still, according to the ANC's own constitution, uh, still a member. And uh, also rebuking those, he says, hate him uh, in the ANC. Um, so that's it for me, Flo Ledwaba, and uh, the rest of the team here at uh, SA Today. Thank you very much uh, for staying with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, the full view is up next at uh, 6 p.m. Take care. Cheerio.